Hello and welcome to this week's Sharing Your Great Practice and I'm at Barming Primary School in Kent where they've been using bird watching in a really imaginative way to boost the children's math skills. Bird watching across the UK is growing in popularity and children are part of that. The pupils at Barming Primary School in Kent have loved being involved in their bird feeding project. Armed with two bird feeders, bird food and a set of scales, they looked for patterns in feeding during the nesting season. We're weighing bird food and we measure them mm -hmm. and this one's one kilogram and then we restock it and then we'll put it back up in the tray. We do it every week and then we find out what's happened and then um, at the end we put it all into a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and we um, make a graph. We found out one time that it, the bird seed was actually heavier than it was when we put it out and when we found out that because it had been raining all, uh, the moisture that the seeds have um, collected in mm -hmm. so it weighed more than it was when it was out. When you usually do maths inside it's not exactly sometimes fun because you have to write it down and it's sometimes hard but this one is you are doing it and you're more interested in it. It's looking at data handling mm -hmm. and it's looking at taking a, a real life situation gathering data and then taking that data, transferring it into graphs, mm -hmm. looking at the graphs and seeing what are the best sort of graphs to represent that data, and then looking at the story that the data told, so trying to see what it, it, information it gave you. Previously we would have used either textbook examples or examples from, from old questions that have been on SATS papers or um, from resources and they were always fixed, they would always give you just the information you wanted whereas this project was going to sort of take us a step away from that and give us very unexpected results um, because you couldn't fix whether the birds would come along and, and what the weather conditions would be. They also carried out an RSPB bird survey which they then turned into different graphs. You're kind of learning two lessons in one because you're learning about what type of birds you can find around your area mm -hmm. and then you get then you make a graph about them back inside the classroom now and the children are feeding all the data they've gathered about the bird feeders into the computers and they're going to be turning it into graphs and analyzing what their findings mean well it's telling us that birds start off very very timid mm -hmm. at coming to the bird feeders and then we have the half term period, the 10 days, mm -hmm. with, where they are, we got, found the average, mm -hmm. and then they start to pick come up, up their again. appetite. And then by day 24, they're. They're eating a lot by day 24. They're eating a lot. Why is that? Um, probably because they've become more confident mm -hmm. in the way that they're coming in. This project has linked maths and science with other areas of the curriculum. They've created their own wildlife art at nearby nature reserves, but underlying all of this has been a real impact on their attainment levels in maths. It allows you to really target the higher level tasks in, in, in APP so that you can actually look and take the, the investigation. Because you're investigating something that is so fluid, um, it allows you to actually get the children to ask questions and to try and find answers to those higher level tasks. So it's sort of taking you much further on than a, a closed textbook type um, task would do. Now if you want to use bird watching to boost your pupil's math skills, then here are some top tips from the staff at Balming Primary School. Get help from wildlife organisations such as the RSPB who can often provide resources to help you get started. Make sure the children are actively gathering the data and interpreting it for themselves. It'll make the maths more relevant, more engaging. You can start off with really simple equipment like scales and two bird feeders. Make the most of your school grounds and locality. And you can branch out and survey insects, wildflowers 
or trees. Well, if you want to find out more, just look at the Sharing Your Great Practice section of the Teachers TV website.